Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. Today we are going to perform a manual internal resistance test on each cell of this LifePo4 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. This is a GBS cell, or a GBS battery rather. Things that we need for this, uh, we've got a CellPro PowerLab 8, we're gonna use that for discharge, a Fluke 87 multimeter, or multimeter if you like to pronounce it that way, and I've got a computer with a Google spreadsheet pulled up. I've set this up so that all of the math is contained in macros within the fields. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill in the V1 or voltage one column and also the V2 or voltage two column. The amperage for I1 is already set to one amp and the amperage for I2 is already set to 10 amps. And then all of these other columns, delta voltage, delta current, and internal resistance in ohms will be automatically populated as we make those measurements. This is just to simplify my life a little bit, you know, so that I don't have to do math on camera because I don't enjoy that. The way we're going to do this is I have a balance connector attached to my LifePo4 battery. I made this the other night by taking a balance pigtail. I'll try to include a, a link to this pigtail down below in case anybody wants it. And I just added some 16 gauge, I think these are like 26 gauge by default. 22, these are 22 gauge. The white wires are 22 gauge by default. Uh, on the pigtail and so I took some 16 gauge wire that I had laying around and I just this was already tinned I tinned the black wire and then I shrink wrapped it or heat shrinked it and then on the other end of the 16 gauge wire I put these ring terminals and so I've got the ring terminals attached to the positives of all of the individual cells I also have my primary uh, power cables attached to the primary uh, positive and negative terminals of the battery. And so I've, I've done a charge. I, I bottom balanced this battery and I charged it to 3.35 volts per cell. The PowerLab 8 ended up putting in 48.03 amp hours into the battery. Doing a little bit of math, that comes up to about if you figure the capacity of the, uh, of the whole battery at about 103 amp hours, you get about, with 48 amp hours in, that's about 46%. So one of the requirements for doing this um, internal resistance test is that the battery is in the PSOC range, which stands for partial state of charge range. The battery temp is normal room temp, it's about 78 degrees down here right now. It's rather hot, it's summer. Um, I get some, you know, environmental air conditioning from the upstairs floors of the house, but uh, this, is, this basement is not air conditioned uh, directly. So it's, it's rather warm, but I think it'll probably still be fine. I think they just don't want you to, they don't want you to do an internal resistance test right after charging or discharging the battery when the battery's hot, right? It should be at like resting room temperature. All voltages are gonna be taken directly from the, uh, from the terminals of the battery uh, using the Fluke 87, okay? What we're gonna do is the first time around, we're gonna discharge the battery at one amp, and then the second time around, we're gonna discharge the battery at 10 amps and we're just gonna measure the voltage readings on each individual cell. I have my cells labeled. This is one, two, three, and four. We're going to perform a discharge. LiPo generic high power. We're gonna perform a one amp discharge. I've already set it to one amp. And we're going to do discharge only. I know you can't see the screen on camera, but I'm just walking you through the settings as I, as I click them. Use banana jacks, yes. Checking pack. Okay, discharging 4S, one amp, 2.5 volts is the set point. And I'm just gonna wait for it to start drawing amperage until it gets to one amp. It's ramping up. Okay, we are discharging at one amp. So let's go ahead and measure cell number one. 3.309 volts. Okay, cell number two. 3.308 volts. Cell number three, 3.308 volts. And cell number four, 3.308 volts. Let me just measure cell one one more time because it's the only one that's off. It's definitely 3.309, okay. So we're gonna stop that discharge. Discharge stopped. Okay, we're gonna start another one. 
And this one is going to be at a 10 amp discharge rate. Okay. Discharge only. Use banana jacks, checking pack. Lipo, enter to confirm. Okay, discharging 4S. And we're gonna wait for the amperage to ramp up to 10 amps. Let's actually, let's cancel this. And let me actually set the discharge rate to 7.25 amps. And then hopefully it'll actually hold that amperage because it was kind of bouncing around a lot. Checking pack. Enter to confirm, LiPo, 4S. Ramping up, 7.25. Okay, so let's, let's just change our spreadsheet real quick to 7.25 for all of these. Okay, and let's take some measurements. Cell one, 3.293. Okay, cell two. 3.291, cell 3, 3.290, and cell 4, 3.291. Okay, so I just took a moment to add a, uh, a last column here. So we've got result, internal resistance in ohms, and we've got result, internal resistance in milliohms. So for cell 1, my internal resistance is 2.56 milliohms, 2.72 milliohms for cell 2. 2.88 milliohms for cell 3 and 2.72 milliohms for cell 4. I've been told that this would be much more accurate if we had a larger delta between uh, the, the two currents. So current 1 was 1 amp and current 2 was 7.25 amps. If, for example, we did current 1 10 amps and current 2 100 amps, then this would be a much more accurate reading. Um, but I think this is probably fine for my purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remake my labels for each individual cell and I'm going to list these milliohm RI ratings. And here's the finished product after my labels have been made. You'll see that uh, I have each cell labeled, cell 4, 3, 2, and 1. I've got my amp hours listed for each individual cell. And I also have recorded here, just in case I forget, the testing parameters for the amp hours. So this was 2.5 volts to 3.6 volts at 30 amps. And, you know, I remember for this particular graph, there was a flat spot on the high knee, and I believe there was a little bit of uh, overcharge there. So this is probably not actually an 8 point, or a 108 uh, amp hour cell. Uh, it's probably a little bit less than that, but uh, hopefully the, ac the measurements are still relatively accurate. Um, my internal resistance is labeled as RI, so 2.72 milliohms, 2.88 milliohms, 2.72 milliohms, and 2.56 milliohms. Now, why did I do this in the first place? Well, as I was doing my charge testing or my capacity testing on this battery, the CellPro PowerLab 8 was giving me bogus uh, internal resistance readings. It was saying they were in the 13.5 to 13.8 milliohm range. And uh, as we can see from this short test, they are not. They're actually in the 2.5 to 2.8 milliohm range. So apparently the internal resistance readings from the CellPro PowerLab 8 on a LifePo 4 battery are relatively bogus. Why do you need to know the internal resistance of your battery or each individual cell as it would be? It is an indicator of health. So as you see those milliohm ratings rise, you know that the end of life is uh, coming soon for your cell. So good, good test to check the health of a, of a lithium battery, I suppose. 
All right, this is Jesse with Create This. If you found this video interesting or useful, go ahead and give me a like down below. Hey, if you hated it, let me know in the comments section down below why you, why you hated it and give me a dislike. If you have any questions about this procedure, feel free to ask. I was given this procedure by a fellow named Sun King on the Solar Panel Talk forum, and uh, this is his post. I will link to the post down below in the description of the video if you want to read that. In addition, I will link to the spreadsheet down below in the description and also as many of these tools as I can possibly find links to in case you're interested in buying any of this equipment or playing with it. So as always, thanks for watching and please subscribe.